Well, I'll start with the background of uh, who I am really and how I got here. Uh, I think uh, that would be nice for all the people listening in uh, uh, to, 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 to kind of relate uh, with what I will present later on. So I'm originally, as you can see, African from Uganda. Uganda is in East Africa. Um, um, from the Eastern part uh, of Uganda in a border town called Tororo, uh, bordering uh, Kenya. Uh, maybe you've heard of Kenya. And uh, growing up, I was mostly interested in uh, uh, mathematics and science topics. And as you can imagine, in countries like ours, that is not uh, uh, expected for girls or for, for ladies. So in most of my classes, I was, uh, you know, one of the very few uh, ladies in the science classes, in the science club, and finally getting to uh, university. I studied in Makere University for my bachelor's, uh, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. Uh, we were only 10 ladies in a class of about um, uh, 100 uh, students. And we always had to prove ourselves uh, in many ways, uh, uh, competing with the guys. Uh, but uh, that, that went really well. I had no issues with that. Um, after finishing my bachelor's, uh, I, went, I got a scholarship uh, to, to, to further my studies in Germany. So I was in uh, Baden-Württemberg in the western part of Germany uh, at uh, Karlsruhe uh, Technical University. And uh, there is where I did uh, speci uh, speci uh, specialize in uh, renewable energy and uh, utilities and waste uh, sustainable processing and got the opportunity to be exposed to uh, uh, state-of-the-art laboratories for uh, testing uh, different kinds of fuels. And once, once I was done with my studies, uh, I then saw the need uh, to return to Africa, to return to Uganda and give back to, to, to the people here, uh, looking at the potential we have in countries like mine. Uh, we have uh, the equator cutting across uh, uh, about the center of Uganda in the middle. Uh, our temperatures are stable on average 25 degrees. Uh, we have a lot of solar potential and other renewable energy uh, resources that by, by that time, that was about 2008 when I returned, uh, had not been fully utilized for the benefit of the people of this country. I hope you're still hearing me well. If, if there's anything, you just let me know if something changes. You just cut out for a short time. So maybe if you want to go back one slide, it was just your audio was kind of mumbled just for a bit. I think turning the video off helped. OK, the video seems to be off already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Alyssa turned it off. So I think that'll help with the bandwidth. Uh, yeah, but if you want to maybe go back one slide, then we could um, people wouldn't miss that. OK, I'll do that. Thank you. There we go. All right. So that, that's the title of the presentation, uh, Renewable Energy Development in Africa, looking at the limits and the prospects. Countries a bit higher than that. Uh, Uganda is at 26%. Uh, uh, we still have a lot of work to do. Hi, Mary. We, we lost Mary. your audio again. Hello? Yeah, sorry. We lost your audio again. Um, let's try one more time. But if not, maybe we can, we, can, uh, we can project your slides from here to reduce the bandwidth required for you um, and, and then just have your audio. So. Um, let, let's try it one more time, and if not, we'll we'll switch to our slides, and then have you just speak, and and you can tell us when to advance them. You know, get a better network. But now I'm stuck in the in the house, so let's let's see how that works. Okay. Um, that should be. Can you hear me? Is it better? It is better now. Um, 
how low it is. Uh, North Africa uh, is, is, has better numbers on several aspects. Uh, but if you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, you have the uh, most of the low numbers there. And um, uh, in East Africa, East Africa has the lowest numbers. So we have a lot of interventions, a lot of initiatives and government efforts geared towards increasing access to electricity uh, in Uganda and in all these countries in East Africa. Um, this is showing the extent of the electricity grid, again, uh, by the power pools that have been set up. Uh, East Africa then would fall under the East African uh, power pool. And there's still So if you, if you remember the numbers for Uganda, for instance, 26%, uh, that is a combination of decentralized systems as well as uh, the national grid. So the national grid numbers are always uh, smaller than the, uh, or a part of the overall access uh, rate or figure that you see for a country. And for, for, the, for the grid extension, we have a lot of uh, development partners interested in investing uh, in different countries at different scales. So this, uh, this slide, <coughs> excuse me, is showing the status on the energy demand. If you see here, most of our energy is still coming uh, primarily from uh, biomass, biomass resources. In Uganda, we have uh, over 90% dependence on biomass uh, for heat applications, uh, for, for, for cooking, for powering small businesses and then uh, hydropower for, for the national grid. Uh, but coupled with that also, we, 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 we have some uh, fossil fuel deposits that are contributing, but the government is now uh, looking at, you know, reducing the proportion of uh, fossil fuel uh, to, to the energy mix and increasing renewable energy and energy efficiency interventions. Uh, Uganda also has, I mentioned already, solar and, and, uh, and um, uh, uh, within biomass, we have several uh, technologies there that, uh, or, or resources. So we have resources for biogas, for generation of biogas. Uh, we have uh, uh, resources uh, that can be uh, converted using gasification systems, uh, combustion, uh, we, 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 we use uh, firewood. Hello? Yeah, we can still hear you really well. We're just, oh, oh, oh no. Okay. Yes, it's, we just kind of turned okay. off, a lot of people turned off their webcams just so that we can help with the bandwidth. Okay, so I saw the change. I said, wow, I hope everything is fine. All right, yes, let me proceed. you're good. <clears throat> so so uh, <laughs> we have multiple resources in, in, in in Uganda, but this is also a uh, what I want to show on this slide is, you know, the tallest bar that you see. Mary, I think you're you're breaking up again. Mary, I think you're you're breaking up again. I'm I'm gonna um, okay. display your slides for you, um, and okay. then and then maybe that'll improve the situation. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're we're now on slide five, just to check, mm -hmm. right? Yep. All right. So Do on, you guys on... see? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, excellent. Thanks. Go, go ahead, Mary. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for those glitches. No. I, I hope we managed to end, uh, to finish, because there are several slides. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can skip some pictures later, but uh, I would really love uh, the, the participants to see all the slides. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so on this 
slide, uh, the focus is, uh, I, I, I want you to look at the, the numbers for Africa. So Africa has the lowest uh, primary energy use per capita per year, so 0 0.017, but it has the highest land per energy use per year. So that represents the potential, uh, whether you're looking at biomass or uh, installation of solar systems, large solar farms or wind, are a lot of potential for uh, conversion uh, conversion systems and technologies to be used to uh, uh, utilize the energy resources that we have to meet our energy demand. Next slide, please. We're ready. Okay, I, I, I don't see the next slide, so I'm not... Okay, so our, uh, I hope you're on slide six. Yep. There's a bit of delay on this side, I think. So um, <laughs> slide six is uh, one of the programs that was launched by the International Renewable Energy Agency um, for you know, structuring and presenting the so-called African Clean Energy Corridor, looking at uh, several, several countries in the Southern Power Pool and the East African Power Pool. A total of about 22 countries participated in this survey and Uganda was one of them. And uh, uh, I was one of the participants uh, coming from uh, my organization to represent the country. So within, uh, within this uh, program, the African Clean Energy Corridor, the, the question that uh, Irena uh, was trying to answer is a question of planning, improving planning and uh, considering the right attributes and using a multi-criteria uh, approach to, to guide the countries in decision making for which uh, uh, renewable energy resources to use or which uh, renewable energy projects to prioritize and present for investments with the partners and the, and the, and the donors that were interested. What was found was that most of the countries um, were not planning properly. Uh, decisions were taken without you know, proper uh, 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 proper methodologies. And, and this was an initiative that was launched that actually later on helped to guide uh, all the countries of the East African Power Pool and the Southern African Power Pool. So you can see here on the slide are several uh, parameters, resource assessment uh, with the final results of uh, using a multi-criteria scoring system to, to come up with uh, the, the zones across those countries, and you'll see the maps later. Next slide, please. We're on slide seven. Yes. So slide seven is showing a summary of the, the, the attributes all the parameters that we used uh, with their weights uh, based on discussions with different energy planners from the 22 countries. Uh, so you can see here uh, the levelized cost of energy weighed 30%, that is the, the biggest weighting as they found out from the discussions that the issues on cost were much heavier than the other parameters like distance to existing load centers, distance to the wind plant and the percentages were distributed as you see there. So this, this formed the basis for the scoring later uh, that produced the maps that you'll see shortly. Next slide, please. <coughs> Excuse me. So this map is a result of that uh, process uh, showing the potential for, 
for solar. And you can see uh, uh, in Uganda with red being the highest uh, uh, amount of isolation and the lighter colors uh, then reducing gradually. So you can see for East Africa, Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania, there's a lot of uh, solar potential that can be tapped for energy and electricity generation. Next slide, please. Uh, slide nine is showing the wind potential. Uh, you can see, for instance, uh, Uganda in the right in the center uh, has a very, very low wind potential. So using these maps, uh, it, it was very easy to agree who is investing more in which uh, renewable energy resources. For Uganda, wind was then uh, uh, the, 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 uh, not, not, not in the top uh, three priorities or so. Next slide, please. Uh, slide 10 is <coughs> giving an overview. Uh, here, the technologies that were used for the study or this program were limited to solar, uh, concentrated solar power, solar PV and wind. However, the methodology uh, could be used to uh, plan for the other renewable energies and the governments and the, the, the energy planners were asked to take up that role and, and, and uh, do uh, uh, planning for the other resources that they have in their countries. So this is, this is just a summary of the three uh, technologies and the potentials in different countries. Next slide, please. And this full report is available uh, uh, on the ARENA website. <coughs> Excuse me. So we are now looking at the a summary of the limits for renewable energy development in Africa. Uh, first is the institutional uh, frameworks the environment that should allow that to happen and the, the structures within the institutions that for instance uh, are responsible for uh, uh, licensing, responsible for processing applications from private sector to get them engaged in developing systems in the country, um, the, 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 the structures that are in place uh, that do planning for energy uh, and, 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 and these kind of topics. There are several gaps there and a number of partners are investing a lot in building the capacity in the institutions to handle the planning, the monitoring, uh, uh, handling uh, big uh, concessions with foreign companies on behalf of the, of the countries. Infrastructure, so more investment is required uh, to extend the infrastructure. If you look at the power pools, for instance, there were discussions to connect um, uh, net networks in neighboring countries as opposed to what is happening now. Uh, all the planning is not harmonized for the regions. That's why they set up the power pools. But there's a lot of investment still required for infrastructure in extending the national grid's infrastructure for um, uh, decentralized renewable energy systems. Uh, policies for renewable energy planning. In Uganda, for instance, we had a policy of, of 2007 for several years, and it's only last year in 2019 when that was being reviewed to, 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 to be updated in a, in a way that the, the, the people in the sector, the, the companies that are doing energy are are, are coordinated properly, that the researchers like uh, such as ourselves can, you know, input uh, research information to help the Ministry of Energy review the policies and, and update. So we worked with the, uh, a policy of 2007 for so many years. And, and in 2019, at least we have that, the draft was done, it should be in the final stages of being published. Uh, coordination and linkages of renewable energy programs. Again, this is close to, it's also a, a, 
and <laughs> a question on knowledge management, uh, 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 just picking results from previous studies and work done and using that to improve you know, uh, projects that come up later. So the linkages are weak, coordination is weak. And because of that, um, uh, inefficiencies in implementation, duplication of efforts, which cause losses uh, in, 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 in money that is invested for renewable energy programs. So there is a continuous discussion on how to improve coordination and linkages, knowledge management, knowledge sharing, uh, building uh, structural knowledge assets to aid and facilitate uh, partnerships and stakeholders to work more efficiently. Uh, there are distortions in pricing across the countries, high initial capital costs for different systems. If you look at uh, solar, for instance, the prices have gone down, but not yet as low as uh, it is in, in the US, for instance, and other countries. So. Uh, because of that, there are still limits in increasing the diffusion of uh, our systems in the rural areas, for instance. Uh, strategies for dissemination. Uh, dissemination of uh, technologies, dissemination of uh, research outputs, dissemination of anything that has been done uh, <coughs> on renewable energy by different partners is still a challenge. Uh, take technical gaps in terms of skilled manpower to design, to install, to operate and maintain uh, renewable energy systems. We still need to build a critical mass of artisans, technicians that can handle decentralized systems, but also um, uh, the, the maintenance and, and building of uh, the, the, the national grid extension programs. I hope I'm still clear. Yes, you still sound great. Excellent. And access to uh, quality information that should guide in uh, decisions on investments. Uh, <laughs> this this is what uh, Irena was trying to solve at the at a macro level for the for the continent. But when we come to uh, the countries like in Uganda, we still have a lot of issues in accessing information. So even if there is uh, good, there are good opportunities that say the private sector could take advantage of to to uh, develop renewable energy. The uh, Accessing that information at the right time uh, is still a challenge. We have um, issues with ICT. You can see the glitches I'm having with internet and uh, I've been working with this for long, but it's still not a guarantee. Um, all these <laughs> glitches affect how much uh, information people can get to take the right decision and how quickly they access that information. Most of the time, uh, people still have to go to physical offices. Uh, sometimes they don't know all the uh, right offices and right organizations to give them the knowledge they need to take decisions. Uh, Creek, for instance, my organization for many years was not known to so many people and, and, and we were producing research uh, information that was not being translated into national programs or helping the people that needed it to take decisions. So that, that it's a question of access to the right information, access to knowledge, uh, what has been done before, where, where is that one-stop place or uh, that virtual platform that people can go to, to, to interact and get the information that they need uh, in developing renewable energy systems. And then, of course, operation <laughs> and maintenance, uh, which is which is still a major problem. So we'll get funding to do uh, uh, install, say, um, a mini grid powered by solar or a biogas uh, plant. But <coughs> after it has been commissioned, 
the questions on how long it will run and whether it will be able to live its full design life. Uh, major, uh, major gaps there. Of course, there are several initiatives now on, you know, uh, using uh, uh, smart systems, developing smart grids uh, that is yet to take off. But for, uh, for largely a number of the systems fail after they've been installed uh, because the planning on operation and maintenance is not uh, implemented. Next slide, please, on prospects, slide 12. So what are the prospects? What are the, the, the things that, you know, give us an advantage as Africa to still follow this path of renewable energy development despite the challenges and the limits? Uh, we, have, we have a huge potential for developing small scale decentralized systems, especially in the rural areas. It's quite costly for some countries to invest on extending the national grid because the rural areas uh, have a very uh, sparsely, uh, the, the distribution of the households does not allow uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the invest, does not allow for uh, let me let me rephrase that, because the in the rural areas, the the houses or the units are not as densely populated as we have in the urban centers. It is more costly for the government to extend the national grid there. But then we have opportunities with communities of hundreds of households, uh, thousands of households together that can benefit from a well-designed smart grid or decentralized system. And so we don't have to wait for the national grid to get to the rural areas. We can do uh, projects with the national grid extension and uh, also do a number of decentralized systems to achieve our electricity access numbers. There is there are prospects for economic, environmental, and social benefits for, for us uh, with the renewable energy systems, because we have uh, a mix of uh, renewable energy resources, solar, biomass, and uh, we, we, if we focus on that and uh, we, we have the opportunity to meet our demands without heavily depending on uh, the fossil fuel resources that we have. And we have uh, social benefits, of course, uh, for, for the communities um, and economic benefits for the small companies that are coming up, uh, private sector, to, to, to install the small scale systems. We also have opportunities for local manufacture and entrepreneurship. So especially if you look at uh, bioenergy technologies, we can make our own uh, cook stoves that match our uh, cult culture requirements and staple food requirements here. Uh, we, we don't have to, to import everything. And there's been a lot of discussion on how to reduce that. Of course, looking at the impact of COVID also, uh, we've not been, uh, a, a lot of importations were, um, uh, neg uh, were not possible in this period, for instance, and that really made uh, the, 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 the Ministry of Energy and other departments to, 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 to sort of uh, uh, put more energy and more emphasis on possibilities of local manufacture. Of course, we still import uh, turbines uh, for hydropower, we still import solar components, but there's been you know, some development in terms of at least assembly, assembling points and uh, working with regional offices like uh, on uh, making turbines within our mechanical engineering departments that may not be of very high efficiency, but can uh, produce and, and, and run a power, a power plant for several years. And then the opportunities with entrepreneurship, uh, with, with the very small businesses, we've seen uh, women getting engaged in, you know, registering small companies to do uh, 
fuels, alternative fuels for cooking, uh, to work with the bioenergy technologies that are developed on the market. A local capacity building with innovative curricula. So <laughs> we have opportunities to increase the capacity of our local engineers uh, uh, in, 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 in training them. Uh, we, we Creek, for instance, has participated in uh, designing curricula for training solar technicians, training uh, uh, cook stove manufacturers to be able to make more uh, high standard and quality renewable energy products. Uh, we have opportunities to engage the community more effectively and include them in decision-making processes uh, so that when they, especially the decentralized systems are installed, they have a sense of ownership because they are part of the process throughout. Uh, we also have, of course, uh, the, the chance to extend campaigns and awareness programs for the communities uh, for, for almost every project to, to increase on the chances of the systems that are installed uh, to live their lifetime and engage uh, community uh, leaders, the working with the local government authorities and the structures that are already in place to sort of uh, form committees that are, are dedicated to the decentralized systems that are installed there. Uh, we, we, we have opportunities to participate, for instance, Creek in policy initiatives and uh, policy reviews. And quite often we're invited to advise or to contribute whatever research we've done to help the government uh, improve on their on the policies for light scale dissemination. Um, with the with the decentralized systems, we don't have to always plan for you know very huge systems. So if you look at solar, for instance or uh, biogas or gasification, we, we have the opportunity to start with a small scale uh, with lower budgets and build those as the demand increases. <clears throat> we formed as, as, as uh, uh, in the introduction, it was mentioned, we formed uh, partnerships across the globe uh, to help us in you know, better research, uh, access to facilities that we don't have in the country. Um, for instance, Creek is partnering with the University of Leeds in the UK, uh, some universities in the, in the, in the US, a provincial center in the US uh, on cook stoves, uh, partners in the EU. Um, and, and with those partnerships, we've been able to you know, uh, come up with research outputs that are relevant for our country. We have funding opportunities like the Renewable or Rural Education Fund uh, that is available for private sector to bid and to compete for. Uh, and if information access is improved, this kind of funding uh, can help accelerate the implementation of programs. So with the funding, sometimes 50% uh, of, you know, the, the, the capex of a project will be funded. Uh, the, 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 the mini grid can be funded through these, uh, these funds. And uh, it's a basket that picks uh, monies from different donors and development partners to basically accelerate the development of renewable energy. And then we have the opportunity for regional integration as we saw earlier with the power pools although there's still, of course, a lot of work to be done there in terms of uh, planning for the infrastructure and interconnections. Next slide, please. Slide, uh, slide 13 is, uh, is uh, a renewable energy, <coughs> excuse me, roadmap that was again developed by the International Renewable Energy Agency to guide the the African countries uh, on, on where to invest and to give some target numbers for 2030. 
So I won't go in the detail of each technology, but you can see the percentages there uh, moving us from 2013 to 2030. Now, several of these governments, as you see in the next uh, table later on, have put some uh, targets uh, within a particular period, targets to achieve. Over the years, it's it, uh, in tracking, not all of them have achieved that. So the, the International Renewable Energy Agency uh, took up this role to guide in you know, setting targets that are realistic. Uh, slide 14. So in terms of the investment required uh, at a regional level for the different technologies you can see here, for East Africa, for instance, we have um, uh, these figures are in a billion US dollars uh, to take us to our 2030 uh, target for East Africa. For all generations, we have uh, 681 uh, billion US dollars, just as an example. And all this will require uh, partnerships, uh, donors getting involved. And we already have several uh, really uh, trying to work together to achieve this. S several of them have opened offices here, uh, like the KFW from Germany, uh, the uh, NORAD from Norway, CEDA from Sweden. Uh, DFID is doing a, a great job in, in, in the renewable energy space. Uh, working together to 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 contribute to these budgets. So this uh, uh, next slide, this is slide fifteen. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you can see some numbers there, some targets. If you can uh, go to Uganda, for instance, uh, let's see. Uganda had a target of uh, sixty-one percent share of renewable energy. Uh, for electricity generation, and I can tell you that it was not it was not achieved by 2017. So that was a question on the planning uh, review of policy, and that's what has been going on to improve that and reset uh, reset the numbers. Um, and uh, several countries have co have made some commitments. Um, I think I'll, I'll leave that. For instance, Kenya says they should double their installed renewable energy capacity by 2012 and 5,000 megawatts of geothermal capacity by 2030. I think they're somehow on track with their, uh, they've been investing in geothermal, but we, 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 we remain you know, watching, uh, seeing the progress with that, whether by 2030 that will be achieved. Uh, slide 16. Our slide 16 uh, is now bringing us to the CRIC interventions. The CRIC is an uh, acronym for Center for Research in Energy and Energy Conservation. That's the uh, organization where I'm MD since 2012. And uh, I've just highlighted quickly the, 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 some of the big programs that we are part of, where I'm co-I, working with the, the, with the researchers in different universities. Uh, across the globe. So we are part of the African Clean Energy Research Alliance, uh, a particular project funded by DFID, uh, solar treatment of biomass for power generation using carbon slurries in hybrid renewable energy systems. Uh, uh, the, the, the Ugandan team has the task to uh, develop uh, an engine that works similar to a diesel engine, but that uses uh, carbon slurries from renewable energy from biomass and not fossil fuel, which will be uh, a, a very interesting technological innovation for the first time in Africa. So we're excited about that. And then creating resilient, sustainable microgrids. We're doing research into that, how to make the decentralized systems more robust in terms of uh, operation and maintenance, stabilizing uh, the, uh, and regulating the electricity generation. And then we also have 
uh, one on bioenergy, but looking at uh, uh, feedstock coming from invasive aquatic microphytes. And particularly in Uganda, uh, we have the issue with the water hyacinth on Lake Victoria and Lake Choga, and we're trying to harness that was a question posed to us by the government and through this research we are uh, giving them knowledge on what to do with the water hyacinth to generate uh, energy and electricity. Next slide please. So <laughs> these are Slide 17 is just uh, what I mentioned earlier, 92% dependence on biomass. Out of uh, the, uh, the biomass is mostly uh, wood. And we've already gone past our sustainable supply of wood. And then we have charcoal, mostly for the urban areas, which is still from wood, and then agro waste. So uh, there's still a lot of work that we also do in terms of um, efficient uh, technologies, uh, even for, you know, that use firewood or charcoal for cooking to improve or increase the access to more efficient technologies for that. In terms of uh, electricity generation, uh, we're just, we're over 1000 megawatts uh, in generation with most of that coming from hydropower uh, and then what we're excited about at this point is that you can see a contribution of solar of 50 megawatts and that is increasing and that's a lot of the efforts from the partners uh, working together with stakeholders uh, bringing in private sector to develop uh, solar for connection to the grid and also solar mini grids in in the country next slide please 19. um that picture just shows you what most of the Ugandans are still using for lighting. It's, a, it's called the, the Tadova light or lantern uh, that is basically a kerosene lamp. Very, very, uh, uh, very, very inefficient in terms of the lighting quality, but also uh, uh, very risky and very dangerous to the health of the children of the users as it produces a lot of hydrocarbons. So the, the goal is to increase on electricity access and uh, uh, solutions like solar lanterns to replace this in the rural areas. So there's a lot of campaigns on that in Uganda. The next slide 20 uh, is on the cooking status. So close to 70% of Ugandans, uh, that, that number has reduced a little bit with updated numbers. I don't have the updated report from the Bureau of Statistics, but it's still about that figure really of people using what you're seeing on the left, that picture. Uh, the three stone fire is still the most popular technology here. And so as Creek, we are working uh, to increase, if you look on the right, the improved cook stove uh, penetration rate Right now, it's maybe about uh, between 10 to 12 to see that increase uh, more and more in the urban centers, but also for uh, the rural areas that use firewood to use more efficient technologies and other alternatives. Next slide, please. Uh, just to check, is everything still okay? Yep, everything yes. sounds great. Okay, great. Slide 21. <clears throat> uh, this is the Creek mission. Uh, we want to enhance access to modern types of energy through applied research, training, and consultancy in East Africa. So uh, uh, Creek is a center that is set up within uh, the university under the College of Engineering, Design, Art, and Technology. And within the college, we have uh, schools, uh, institutions, and then centers like ours. So the centers are meant to connect with the, the, uh, the, the business community, with the uh, local governments, with the uh, development partners and the government. The, the schools will do the mainstream teaching 
uh, and the institutions uh, uh, do basic research. So we pick, we work together with the, uh, we pick uh, basic research inputs, uh, working with professors in the college uh, to do our applied research, where we, we take, we, we build facilities and allow the people to engage in the communities where there's uh, the energy need to interact with the technologies and uh, we pick our data from that environment so that we are informed on the success factors that would we'll then use to advise government or advise development partners on where to invest and which other factors beyond technology would affect um, or would contribute to successful projects. So we focus on basic uh, research, the usage of the technologies and the factors around that. And then capacity building and training uh, because of the limits that I mentioned earlier on the technical uh, <coughs> front, building capacity of uh, practitioners, um, local government or government planners to plan better, uh, giving them knowledge on the resources available, um, training for uh, solar technicians. Uh, so we do every, every two months, uh, at least <laughs> a training on different aspects for different groups. And then consultancy and advisory services uh, for the development partners and uh, the industry. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Our focal areas are there for rural electrification, as you saw the numbers earlier, uh, energy for productive use, where we uh, propose the use of energy from different technologies to drive other sectors like agriculture, uh, metal works, and then household energy with the solutions like the small household cook stove or the small lantern to replace the dangerous kerosene lanterns. So that's those. Those are the, those are the thematic areas. Energy entrepreneurship, where we're building capacity of small businesses, young engineers to look at energy as a way to generate income, and we build their technical confidence on design, installation, uh, and and business at, uh, training, and then energy efficiency, which cuts across uh, all the technologies, all the interventions. Uh, there we are. Uh, looking at the top 100 uh, consumers of energy in, in the cities as well. And with that alone, we've managed to save over 10 megawatts of energy just through uh, 10 megawatts of power through uh, in uh, energy efficiency interventions. We do verifications and audits for companies and give them recommendations to, to install uh, energy saving uh, systems improve their power factors, and then to support that uh, to the to the right to the right, you see we have uh, two state of the art laboratories for testing uh, solar PV products, as we have a lot of quality issues with products coming in, and then uh, another lab, uh, a regional testing and knowledge center under the uh, Clean Cooking Alliance for testing. Uh, bioenergy technologies for cooking, both the uh, household sizes and the institutional cooking technologies, as well as looking at characterization and uh, testing of fuel properties for all the alternative fuels we have, carbonized and uncarbonized. Next slide, please, slide 23. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I thought it would be nice to share with you this definition as uh, we have a number of students here. And this definition for a sustainable energy system design, what that means for several years we're talking about this and uh, nobody could really define what, what is entailed in a sustainable energy system. And so through an EU project with uh, Polimi University in Italy and uh, other, uh, several other universities this we, uh, we came up with this definition. It's a design of a system of products and services that are together able to fulfill a particular customer demand. So there's a unit of satisfaction that has to be de defined in a sustainable energy system design. Uh, 
Number two, there has to be an innovative interactions or configuration of stakeholders that are linked to this uh, satisfaction system. And lastly, uh, there has to be a, a solid offer with economic, uh, social, environmental benefits with the solutions that are proposed. And this is a summary of that. So you have a satisfaction system <clears throat> and the understanding on this, uh, on the satisfaction system and defining the unit of satisfaction uh, was that we needed to, you know, not just stick to producing or planning for renewable energy products, the, 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 the technologies, but to look at the actual demand that the communities or the countries need. So uh, in some cases, uh, I, uh, an, an, uh, an entity requires lighting as, as, as the, the, the unit of satisfaction. So we, the, the, they don't have to take all the risks of running a full plant by themselves if there's another party that can take that risk. So this, this definition helped in how we are planning for sustainable energy systems, looking at both the products and the services, looking at the actual unit of satisfaction and defining that uh, the right stakeholders and the offer model. At Creek, uh, the next slide 25, this is our approach, general approach <coughs> for sustainable energy, trying to uh, summarize what we've written up there in the definition of uh, sustainable energy system design, that you have to start with the core uh, primary data to be picked in the center of these circles, which is the demand, the fuel, the technology, the application, and the human factor. And after picking that data, then we can make decisions on how viable the system is technically, social, economically, environmentally, and then upscale. And while this looks very simple, it's not as simple as it, it seems because for most of our projects in the past uh, in, in the country, and that's why we developed this approach, the, plan, the implementation of the projects were going faster than the planning and the primary data collection. Uh, this is just a summary of some of the tools we use for design. I won't uh, focus on that so much. Uh, a summary of our services. I'm on slide 27 now. I... Yep, Sorry. we're on 27. Yeah, uh, summary of our services. So if you'd summarize what Creek does. So we do tests for renewable energy technologies and we are recognized by the National Bureau of Standards here. Uh, using ISO 17025 uh, protocols, which are internationally accepted. Um, we do project implementation, supervision and administration, trainings uh, on different topics. Just a summary of what I've already said, uh, consultancies. Um, uh, we do uh, baseline and feasibility studies if you, if you consider small hydropower, for instance. And we do this across uh, these technologies, solar PV, but we are now going into solar thermal as well. Uh, small hydropower, so we'll leave the big hydropower projects for the government. The government is uh, doing the planning for that. And we're focusing on the small ones from 10 megawatts downwards to a few kilowatts that would fit in communities with decentralized systems. Um, we uh, bioenergy technologies, including biogas, gasification, combustion, torrefaction, uh, alternative fuels for, uh, for, for different cooking technologies, and then energy efficiency appliances. So those are the technologies. We are just trying to enter wind. It hasn't been a major part of our work, but we've now trained staff for wind, and we are part of the wind association in Uganda, and we're hoping, uh, although we have uh, a low potential of wind in Uganda with the advancement in technology, uh, taking, uh, being able to generate power with small velocities of wind, uh, we, we, we should be able to engage some projects, especially in the northern part of Uganda. Uh, next slide, please, 28. Uh, this is uh, 
a sample of the partners. In order to do this work, we have to work with a number of partners. Uh, we wouldn't be able to, uh, to achieve uh, all these uh, you know, interventions that you've mentioned, uh, that was also mentioned in the summary without, this part, without our partners. And you can see there on USA, uh, we've worked with MIT, uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Um, we also have local partners within the region in East Africa and uh, in Uganda. We partner with NGOs, uh, government and, and, and several others. Uh, just a time check. Um, I'm kind of enjoying myself now, and uh, just just want to check how much how much more time I have. So I I finish on time. Yeah, we um, we like to leave about um, 20 minutes for questions, which um, puts us usually finishing around now. Um, but if you have a few more slides you'd like to get through, um, we can certainly um, do that as well. Okay, so I put all these slides because uh, this is an opportunity that I honored and uh, um, I know that after this, uh, people can read and refer later. So um, I, I don't have to speak on all of them. So I will, I will skip some now. The, the, next, the next part was a focus on communities. Um, I'm not sure how much interest is there uh, with the audience on that, but for us in in Africa, in Uganda, this is this is a critical area. If you remember the slides, the slide I showed on our approach as Creek, human factor was bold in red because of a reason. We found that as a key issue for either the success of a program or the failure of it. Uh, looking at the diverse cultures that we have in Uganda. In Uganda alone, we have over 50 tribes. Each tribe has uh, different staple foods, has um, different ways of doing things. And that sort of trickles into every project that we implement. Uh, the, the, uh, our biggest budgets in Creek is on logistics to so go into the fields and just engaging the community, engaging the, the, the beneficiaries of the projects to get them to understand, to, to, to own the systems, it takes a while. And so um, the projects that succeed are those that understand the community, the, the beneficiaries very well and involve them at the right time. And those that fail are those that, you know, um, do all everything from the capital and just go and, you know, implement it. Uh, uh, there's, there's usually a challenge with that. So, if I go to slide 13, gives a summary of the key messages for communities. <clears throat> and the rest of the slides is a, uh, are details on these five key messages. So the key messages are, one, uh, the, uh, the community is interested in improving the quality of their life. So any project that is designed has to have this in mind, as opposed to just taking technology to the field. We've seen very nice uh, systems for cooking that have been given through a project, heavily funded, distributed in a community. And the community after a week goes back to the three stone fire, uh, even though it's, uh, it's less efficient, it's hazardous for their health. They go back to it for cultural reasons and other things. Um, they want to, uh, uh, they have desire, number two, they have unmet demand that is not usually considered in planning. Uh, so, so there are standard things that the planners in energy will consider, but the community has to be engaged to understand what their demands are, whether current or future. And so that gap has to be closed. Uh, Productive uses for income. So that is an interest area and several partners have picked that up. That, uh, and, and within, within our thematic areas of Creek, uh, uh, we, we term that 
energy for productive use. So energy to drive other uh, sectors for income generation. And then access to information, I mentioned that earlier, uh, they're interested in knowing from the beginning and not at the end of the project about the project. Uh, they're also interested in being involved in the decision-making process. So that summarizes that. And these graphs are simply explaining and giving data on that. So we go to slide 36. Uh, slide from slide 36, <laughs> we're just looking at <clears throat> how complex or what are the key things to consider in, you know, if we are to engage the communities in those conversations from those five messages to, uh, to design systems to improve their lives. Uh, this is a definition, you can quote this, but uh, maybe there are better definitions elsewhere. I found this uh, very, uh, I found this resonating with what we do here. So design is a human capacity to shape and make our environments in ways that satisfy our needs and give meaning to our lives. So the emphasis is that there shouldn't be a disconnect be between the technology team and the social economic team and the uh, beneficiaries that are finally going to use this, they have to be able to see that the technology is improving their lives. Uh, and so those, uh, those conversations are, are necessary. It always starts, uh, slide 37 now, it starts with a, a, a very fuzzy beginning in the conversations, people with different interests and this is why it takes a lot of time to engage the community, but it's worth it uh, for the success of projects. And after a while, uh, the objectives become more clear, there's agreement, and then we can achieve sustainability. I'll skip the next slide uh, and go to slide 39. So slide 39 gives one methodology, one approach uh, for energy planners to consider uh, uh, in designing to improve life. It's called a design to improve life campus. Uh, as one of those that was trained in Africa by CTCN, uh, by a company called Index in Denmark, uh, uh, contracted by CTCN of UNFCCC. And with this methodology, we can effectively engage uh, stakeholders, engage communities, uh, balance out the motivations uh, to work towards sustainability. So this is an example on slide 40 now uh, of an impact story that what you'd expect someone in a rural area to appreciate with an energy system or to expect from there. He says, my business operations have improved. Preservation of fish is now easy with availability of ice. Other businesses in the area have been boosted. We now have many shops selling cool drinks, electrical appliances and other things. Our standard of living has changed for the better. There is now more harmony and bonded friendship, even between the rich and the poor. And we now at the same level. So this, these are just statements to show uh, that I wanted to extract to show you what, what the communities will consider for improving their lives what they touch on. And if a project does not highlight this at the beginning, does not bring these benefits clearly, then there's a, pot a potential of uh, failure. Um, and this is why they have to be considered in the, in the planning process right from the start. The rest from slide 41, these are now just pictures. Uh, of uh, some of the small systems that we've installed, uh, put in the communities for either research uh, or energy supply, uh, as small as you know, containers in in a in a community uh, that uh, people can come and charge their phones. They can come and do some uh, uh, printing, stationery, uh, printing exams for students in rural schools. Uh, so such a container already can be very impactful in a community. Um, this is a turbine with some level of local manufacture within the region that we installed for a tourism business. Um, 
um, going to the biogas digester now, working with Worldwide Fund for Nature to do biogas systems in institutions. Uh, skipping to slide 46, uh, working with UNIDO on, um, uh, this is a, a, a demo gasification plant in Northern Uganda for powering productive use uh, uh, for maize milling, uh, 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 making peanut butter for the local market and the regional market. Um, some pictures, uh, uh, slide 47, on awareness campaigns that we do with special groups like women um, on cooking technologies, on the usage, and uh, just discussing with them. Um, slide 48, that's at the highest level with the president, uh, the president of the country uh, uh, showing him uh, in an exhibition uh, what we're able to do in the energy sector, what we're able to contribute. Uh, slide 49, partnerships with GIZ, a German corporation that has been supporting the sector for a while. So with Creek, we, 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 we're doing a lot of work with them, with the refugee settlements, with the communities, uh, solar dissemination studies. Uh, they are a strong partner of ours. At, uh, technical trainings on slide 50. Um, Energy verification on slide 53. Hope I'm not too fast. Um, uh, where we put our gadgets on terminals for big companies and help them give them a business case for investing in uh, efficient uh, devices. And then uh, lastly, pictures on the testing facilities for solar products on slide 54. Uh, at Creek, slide 54 is on solar testing and slide, uh, the next slide to that, uh, the number is not showing because the picture is wide, but uh, the one with this, yeah. Um, that is for testing emissions from local and uh, imported stores, uh, testing for efficiency, thermal efficiency and uh, classifying uh, this the, the, the quality status of the stoves in the country. And then lastly, some pictures of stoves on the market. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much. Um, so um, it's, um, it's 11.48. How about we have um, about two questions um, from the broader audience and then for students who are going to um, uh, see uh, Dr. Abo afterwards in, in our separate uh, Zoom meeting, uh, maybe you can reserve your questions uh, until then. Um, so uh, with that, um, I'd like to um, ask folks to raise their hand or to use the chat line um, to ask questions. Dan, um, I saw, uh, Dan, you had your hand up briefly. Um, would you like to ask your question? Oh, yeah, I, I did, but I was going to wait for the lunch, like you said, but I'll go ahead and ask. Um, sure. Thank you, Dr. Abo. Um, I really like your presentation, and I, I really like the, the trouble you went to to come up with such nice graphics. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering if you could... Uh, well, going off of what you were saying about the human factor, I was wondering if you might talk about how your work is affected by human migration and, and how your your um, your work might also in, inversely infect uh, human migration as well. Uh, could you repeat your question? I lost uh, one or two words between human, the first human migration and the last one. Um, just how your work is impacted by human migration, where you are, and how how your work, you know, I would hope um, does lead to some alleviation of human migration as well. 
<laughs> okay, um, thank you for your question. Um, I, I, I need to have a, 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 a simple definition of human migration. Uh, are you referring to uh, the, 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 the refugees uh, in, in Uganda or is, there, is, it, is this something different? Can you just say what you mean by human migration? Sure. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I do agree with you. It's, it's very broad. Um, and the work you're doing is also very broad, um, continent wide and nationally, internationally, and also just in the sense of um, dynamics of rural urban migration. But, but yeah, okay. I think ultimately what I'm, I'm getting at is um, perceived trends in human migration with climate change in particular and, and other big social um, impacts. So, so people moving uh, from the rural areas coming to the urban areas. Yeah, I think that's one aspect. Um, and I guess just however you, you think it's most relevant to your work. Yeah, so so let me let me let me talk about uh, because sometimes when we are discussing human migration in Uganda, the focus is more on uh, uh, the people coming from uh, South Sudan and the neighboring countries that are troubled, uh, coming to get refuge in our thirteen settlement camps here, and how that has affected our work. So that's one part, and then uh, the part that you're talking about within within the country, uh, those movements. So in terms of the, 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 the refugee um, settlements, the, 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 the influx of, of refugees, uh, especially from Sudan, has affected uh, our work in a way, uh, in a way that uh, they have settled uh, in, in you know, the designated uh, districts that are called hosting districts here. And uh, we have a policy that is called a radical policy different from other countries that are harboring refugees that basically allows the, the refugees to, to interact uh, more freely with the host, host uh, districts and the host populations. And that, of course, has uh, positives and uh, negatives. There's been impact on the environment. That's a major, major concern uh, from the office of the prime minister. And uh, the, 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 in 2016, we were hired to do a, a quick study to, to see the extent of that impact and to propose solutions uh, for you know, uh, energy solutions, recommendations for, uh, for several aspects across the 13 settlements. And it's still a, a growing concern uh, as we've, we've surpassed our sustainable supply of wood for either building or uh, energy use. And uh, but where the refugees are settled have the highest uh, impact. Uh, the trees are literally, we, we, even with the pictures, you can see that the places are totally bare. And so there's a huge effort to curb that. And through that study, so many partners came together and they formed a uh, um, a framework and also uh, uh, several committees to work with the government and the donors uh, to, to, to start implementing interventions from the recommendations. In terms of the, 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 the urban rural uh, migration, uh, for us in our work with the approach that I presented, it doesn't pause, we, we, we don't have a lot of challenges with defining our interventions because we pick, we depend on our primary data for any intervention that we design. 
So we, we of course have to work with the statistics from the U-Boss, those are partners to check uh, current numbers of day populations and night populations. But once we, we pick, uh, we were not using reference data, it's easy for us to design solutions. For instance, if you look at energy efficiency, they uh, will we'll use our gadgets to pick the overall consumption in a place. And uh, if the, there's been a change in the numbers that will reflect in, our, in, the, in, the, in the data we collect, but it won't necessarily uh, hamper our work in terms of providing energy services for the market. So I hope, I hope I've tried to answer that. If there's a follow-up question, you can go ahead and ask. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So thank you so much. Um, we are we are at our uh, a little beyond our, our time limit here. So um, I'd like to give a virtual applause. I know that we can't um, show Dr. Abo our appreciation um, of, of her talk here, but um, I'll I'll virtually applause and and please uh, go ahead and do the same uh, all of you. Um, and uh, with with that. Um, Dr. Abba, we uh, you'll have a separate link for, for uh, to be able to uh, talk with some of our, our students who've signed up as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I wish we could all clap really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can actually just <laughs> unmute clap. and clap everybody, which if you'd like <laughs> to. <laughs> but but I'm good. <laughs> I'm good.